All right, we've gone through, we've introduced most of the interesting types of variables and data types that we're going to be using in Python. Now, let's talk about operators. Operators are things that you can use on these variables and their values um, to modify them or change them or do math or learn from them in some way, right? So there's lots of different types of operators that we could be talking about. There's arithmetic, right? There's assignment, there's comparison, logical, identity, membership, and bitwise operators. We're gonna, gonna, we're gonna go through a few of these now. We're gonna go through these now in sequence, right? Let's start first with the arithmetic operators. If you've got variables, you know, x and y, you can add them together, subtract, multiply, divide, take the modulus, exponentiation, or floor division. Let's show these a little bit. So let's start by declaring something, right? So let's make a variable, we'll call it just x equals five. Now, when we first run this, what's that going to be? It's gonna be an integer type. Okay, so let's make another one that's a float. Let's say that y is equal to 2.5, okay? When we run that, we know that it's a float. So let's try and do some math with these things. Let's say that z is equal to x plus y. When we run that, what will the integer type, what will the variable type be? Well, you're adding five plus two and a half, so it's gonna be seven and a half, that better be a float, okay? Same thing if we multiply it, right? So if you take an integer and do, you know, a lot of these math operations with them, it's gonna turn it into a float if your other variable's a float, right? Um, so this time it's gonna be multiply, so we're gonna do the little star for multiplication. We run that, and now z is 12.5, it's a float, okay? We can do complex numbers, right? Let's take, um, we'll call this num complex, right? And this is gonna be equal to, let's say, one plus, uh, 3j, right? By adding that second term that has the j in it, it's going to know that that's a complex number, right? So it knows that's a complex number where you have the real and the imaginary component to it. If we take this complex number, right, so num underscore complex, and we add it to something else like x, right? So now we're saying that z is equal to a complex number plus a real number. What's that going to do to z? z used to be a float, but when we run it now, now z is going to be a complex number, right? Where it's added, um, it's added those two things, okay? So uh, what else can we say about these? Um, multiplication, division, those are pretty straightforward. What about modulus? What does modulus do? Well, let's try it. Let's take uh, five divided by three, right? Let's take that. So let's change our y value to three up here. And now for our modulus, we're going to have z is equal to x, What's the symbol here? We're gonna do per percent sign y, okay? When we run that now, z is going to be an integer of two. So what is that? When you take five divided by three, what modulus is, is it's the leftover, right? The remnant, right? When you take it, when you take the division of something, it's what's left over between a whole number. So you can do three, and then there's two left over when you divide it. So that's what that is. Um, there's floor division, which will tell you how many whole numbers can divide into something. So it ignores the remnant and tells you just how many numbers. Let's try that. So z is now going to be equal to x. The nomenclature is two slashes, slash, slash, y. So let's try that. It's going to be one, right? Because how many times does three go into five? One, and then you have the two as your remnant. Uh, so that's the difference between modulus and this floor division. And then if you want to raise something to the exponent, you do two of these stars, right? So if we wanted to raise five and cubit, right? So we would say that z equals x star star y. Let me run that. Now it's going to be cubed, so it's 125. Five times five times five, okay? So those are your arithmetic operators. Um, and the key is, yeah, remember that the type will change if you use something like complex and you do math with anything else, that new thing is gonna turn into a complex um, and float similarly most of the time with integers. What else can we say? Um, there's these cool assignment operators. In other languages like C++, the reason we call C++ is that in a loop, uh, which we'll talk about soon, each time you go through, maybe you wanna increment the size of your variable, like C wants to go from, if it was one the first time, when you go through the loop again, it should become two. So they have a code called C++ to do that, right? There's a shorthand for doing that. We don't have that in Python. Instead, we have this one here. So first off, there's the equal sign. That's straightforward. If you wanna make a variable equal something, you just use the equal sign. But then there's this, this plus equal. So if you have x plus equals three, what it does is it takes the previous x value, adds it three and equals that to the new x. So we would say like x plus equals five. So currently, or let's do four. Currently, x starts out as 5, so it's going to take that previous value of 5, add 4 to it. So this should be 9 by the time we run this code. 
x should now be, and it is, it's now 9, okay? So that's the plus equals. So instead of having c++, plus plus, what you would do is that. Every time that you run it through, x is just going to increment by 1. It went from 5 where we started, and now it's up to 6 over here, okay? Um, there's other things, though. There's minus equals, which now you're going to go down by 1 unit. There's multiply equals, which you're going to take the previous and multiply it by that number, right? So this is all the same stuff as before. It's just acting it on itself and then reassigning it to itself, okay? Um, so that's all pretty straightforward. Um, what about this one? These are Python comparison operators, right? Lots of times in coding, we need to make a comparison. Is this thing bigger than that? Is it equal to that? Is it you know, greater than? Whatever. So we can do that with these uh, here. For example, let's come down here in our console and let's ask, is x equal to y? Well, right now stored in memory, it's 6 and 3, so that better come back false. And it does. It comes back false. However, we could ask, is x greater than, what's our symbol here? Greater than y? And it's going to come back true. Is y greater than x? It's going to come back false, right? What else can we do? How about not equal to? You're asking, is x not equal to y? So we do the exclamation point equal y, and it's going to say true. Of course, they're not equal to each other, okay? Um, and then you've got greater than or equal to. You just include the equal sign afterwards. So is x greater than or equal to y? going to say no, but what if we said that x was equal to 3, we modify it in the memory, now let's try that, x is it greater than or equal to um, y, now it's going to say true, okay, so those are your comparison operators, we're going to need those once we get to logic, uh, uh, there's other logical operators, and, or, and not, right, so for example, you could, this, uh, this one says it's going to return true if both statements are true, for example, if x is less than 5 and x is less than 10, it will return true. So let's try this. So x is less than y. That's not true. And x is greater than 1. So it is greater than 1, but it's not uh, less than y. It's equal to y. So this is going to come back false, right? So you can combine these things together. You could do or, though. How about this one? Let's do the exact same thing, but instead of and, let's do an or statement. So this time it's saying, is x less than y? We know that it's not, because they're equal to one another. Or, is x greater than 1? It is greater than 1, so this is going to come back true. right? And then you can have the opposite, not. So it's going to reverse the result. It returns false if the result is true. right? So, so we could say, you know, we could say not um, x is not equal to y. So we know that x is equal to y. So if it's saying that it's not, this should come back as true, right? So these are all the different logical tools that you can use when you're building your arguments in your code, okay? Which, again, we'll get to soon. We'll actually start using these things. There's these interesting identity operators. These are, we've been using them a little bit, right? So you can say is something or is it not something, right? So right now, let's do x is y. Currently, that should return true because they're equal to one another. Um, and so we could say x is not y, and it's going to come back false, right? Because they are, in fact, currently equal to each other. But we could say y is not z, and it's going to come back true because 3 is not the same as 125, okay? There's membership operators where you can say is something present in an object. So we have individual values right now, but let's add a list. Let's create a list over here. So let's say that... Um, our new list is going to be equal to, again, we're using square brackets, and we'll do cat, let's do dog, and we'll do bird. All right, so now let's run that. So we have this new list, which has those three things in it. We can come down here and we can ask, right, um, so in, right? So let's say um, fish in new list, right? And it's going to say no. That's not in there. But if we modified that and included something that we know is in it, like cat, let's run that again, and now it's going to say true. So these are interesting sort of, uh, they call them membership operators. And you can do, again, the opposite, not in. You can tell, it will tell you true if it's not present in that object, okay? And then you can do uh, operators also at the bit level, but I don't think we're going to bother with that, okay? So these are the operators we can use. You can see that how they uh, interact with the variables that we've created. Okay, let's move on.